Hi, brothers and sisters. It's Pastor Tim Henderson. Well, I want to talk about James chapter 2, verse 19. Now, I've already dealt with on videos a couple of times, probably more than a couple of times, the passage, faith without works is dead. That James was no way saying that works is involved with our salvation. I explain that in great detail. Faith in Christ alone. We are saved, Ephesians 2, 8, 9, for we are saved by grace through faith, and that not of ourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works, lest anyone should boast. So I want to read, I'm reading from the King James Version. I often do go back to the King James Version, although I look at other versions as well, other translations, and often I'll go to the original language. James, and I encourage you to as well. I know some of you have said, hey, do you like Strong's? I absolutely do. Um, I also um, cross-reference translations, take it in the context, and when you're looking at a word, if you're looking at the original language, try to find out where it was first used in, used in the Bible because first mention is a key and properly exegeting scripture and understanding the concept. So there's a lot of different ways. I'm not going to do that teaching right now, maybe at a later date. But yes, I do like the Strong's. I do love the King James Version. I also use other versions and translations. So I, I cross-reference those and then look at the context. Always look what's coming before, what's coming after, what was going on contextually and the history and the context of that passage. Just a little side note. James 2.19 Thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. Now many are using that to say, they, they accuse us of easy believism, license to sin, those of us who are grace preachers. The gospel of grace, and I will tell you, uh, there is no other, any other gospel that is preached, the Apostle Paul said this in Galatians 1, 8, and 9, if anyone, even an angel from heaven, preach a gospel other than what gospel? Look up 1 Corinthians 15, 1 to 4. Then Christ shedding his precious blood on the cross at Calvary, always having been God, never having sinned, he was perfect and he became sin, as 2 Corinthians 5, 21 tells us, that we might become the righteousness of God. God made him who knew no sin to be sin, that we might become the righteousness of God. We are saved by grace through faith. Faith plus nothing equals our salvation and eternal security. We believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. Any other gospel, anything taught, faith plus works, faith plus anything else, that is the, the Bible. Galatians 1 8 9 says, if anyone, even an angel from heaven, preach you a gospel other than that, than the gospel of grace, that person is accursed. So just as a reference, so here people use this to debate that and say, but even the devil, even the demons believe, believing alone is not enough. And boy, have I, I mean, I just the other day had someone come up to me in a store who has watched the videos, has made sure that I know that they're not a subscriber, I consider subscribers channel family members and know we love you and appreciate you and you're prayed for and I know you're praying for us. But this person was like, you you believe in easy believism. You, there were a lot of things. Sloppy gospel. You know, they, just the, the things that they throw. That's not true. It, it wasn't easy for Jesus. He, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. In fact, on the cross at Calvary, when you think about what he went through, oh, read the account for yourself. When you think about what he went through, when he cried out, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Habakkuk 1.13 tells us that the eyes of the Father are so pure, so holy, he cannot tolerate wrongdoing, he cannot look on evil. Sin separates us from God, and Jesus became sin that we might become the righteousness of God, but he overcame that. He paid the debt once and for all with his precious blood that was shed on the cross at Calvary, all sufficient. He died, was buried, and conquering, held death in the grave, rose from the dead on the third day. Oh, pray, thank you, Jesus. Thank, sometimes you just have to take a praise break and thank him. So this is a scripture 
Thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. The devil also believes and trembles. Many of the accusers and, and those who even make videos of grace preachers will say they're, they're the devil, they're heretics, they're false teachers, expose them. Even the devil believes their believing isn't enough. You have to do this. You have to live to a certain standard. You must repent of every sin. Repentance unto salvation is a change of mind. It is metanoia. And yes, as a believer, after we are saved and sealed, we want to live a life that brings glory and honor to God. Of course we do. We Holy Spirit abides in us. We don't want to grieve Holy Spirit, but we are not saved by the way we live, and we're not kept saved by it. We're not saved by works. We're not kept by works. I say all the time, but we are saved for works. We are saved the nanosecond. We believe on the redemptive work of Christ on the cross of Calvary, for the remission of our sins, right? We say the ABCs, admit you're a sinner in need of a Savior. Believe, believe, place your trust, your confidence on Christ and his redemptive work on the cross at Calvary by shedding his precious blood to pay the debt. No more can sin be attributed to my account because I am a new creation in Christ Jesus. I am born again, born of the Spirit. That nanosecond, I was saved and sealed, that I believed, <sighs> till the day of redemption, right? We're baptized into one body. What body? The body of Christ. By whom? By the same Spirit, Holy Spirit. It's regenerating work of Holy Spirit. So they'll use this verse to try and debate and say, see, even the devil believes, and he's going to hell. Let me go to my notes and explain as best I can and as briefly as I can for you what that actually means. So, that this is a debated verse. What it's really talking about, a person's professing faith may be mental assent only. What do I mean by that? Of course, Hasatan, the accuser of the brethren, knows God. Of course he does. And, and believes that God exists. He knows that. Believes that Jesus died on the cross. Good grief. Go back. What did he try to do? He tried to adulterate the seed. He's tried as in the days of Noah. He, he tried to prevent uh, the Israelites, right? Moses' mother put him in a basket on the Nile River. Why? Because Pharaoh was having the, the baby boys thrown into the Nile and killed. Think about during the time of Herod, uh, when he was having the boys around the time of Jesus' birth, having the Jewish boys killed to and under. Why? Because Hasatan did not want the sea, he did not want Jesus to even be born. And when Jesus was born, incarnate, always being God, wrapped in flesh. He never sinned. What did Hasatan try to do? He tried to tempt him in the wilderness, right? He said, I'll, if you bow to me, I'll give you the kingdoms of this world. What was he trying to do? Because Jesus could be tempted just like us. What was he trying to do? He was trying to get him from going to the cross at Calvary. He knew who he was. Jesus went to the cross willingly and shed his blood. Can you just imagine all the demons all the principalities, if they could, to prevent him from rising again on the third day, they would have, but they couldn't. And so what did they try to do? They tried to change the story. They want people to believe that he didn't rise from the dead, that it's a myth, that it's a fallacy, because Hasatan wants to stop. Now what is Hasatan trying to do? He's wanted to destroy Israel and the Jewish people. Just look through history. Good grief. Look through ancient history up to modern days. The hatred for Zion. The hatred for Israel. For the, for the people of Israel. If Iran could, they would obliterate. If Hamas and Hezbollah could, they would rid the planet of the Jewish people and the state of Israel. That's what they would do. Why? Because Hasatan 
is behind it. Why? What's next? Jesus did die, was buried, and rose from the dead, hallelujah, and is seated at the right hand of the Father in power and majesty far above all power, dominion, rule, and authority. And as believers in Christ, we are seated with him. We are heirs of God and co-heirs with Jesus Christ. So the enemy wants to keep you duped. He wants to keep you bound up. He wants to keep you thinking like the doctrine of demons that, okay, you believe on him, but you also have to do things to maintain that because if he can keep you distracted and wrapped up, he feels like he can't have, right? He doesn't want you to put your trust completely in the redemptive work of Christ on the cross at Calvary because he knows if he can get you trusting in yourself, just like the root of his pride and arrogance that said, I will ascend above. I will. I will. That's Hasatan. And when we think that it's what Christ did plus what I will, that is the same spirit. Oh, brothers and sisters, I, I hope you can see this. So... If it's only mental assent, think about this. Ha, Satan knows. Oh, and what he's trying to do now, what is the big move? If he could destroy Israel, if he could obliterate Israel off the face of the map, if he could destroy the Jewish people, what he's trying to do is we know that the rapture is imminent. Now that's set, separate from the, that's a distinct event from the second coming. We are going to be caught up as 1 Thessalonians 4 16 to 18 says, The Lord himself shall descend with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and the trump of God. The dead in Christ shall rise first, and then those of us who are alive will be caught up together with them in the air, and we will be with the Lord forever, and we encourage one another with his glory to God. It's... Uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 50 to 53 gives you the same account. And there are other passages that speak to the rapture of the church. And while the word in our translation rapture isn't there, that word was in the Latin Vulgate and harpazo is the Greek word that it comes from, the catching up, the snatching away. Hasatan, Satan, does not want Jesus in the second coming. For his feet to land on the Mount of Olives, as the word of God says, and it will split in two. And Jesus will take his rightful place on David's throne, on his throne, and he will rule and reign during that millennial kingdom. Satan will be bound, and, and he does not want that to happen. That's, he's trying to prevent it. This is the hatred, the spirit against Israel and the Jewish people. He doesn't want the justification of the Jewish people, the time of Jacob's trouble. I do believe he wants the believers out of here because we're the restrainers. Holy Spirit, we're the temple of Holy Spirit. So just believing in or a profession of, and there are many people who sit in churches who do good works, who have not believed on the redemptive work of Christ on the cross of Calvary. There's a profession, but the belief, the trust, placing all their trust, or they'll believe, but they believe that they have to do works, that they have to live to a certain standard, that they have to be good enough, that they have to be worthy enough. I already did that video last night, what that's referring to the time of Jacob's trouble. And so in this, there, you know, they have intellectual, uh, intellectual or, or mental assent to a well-known fact. Even atheists, even forensic scientists and atheists believe that Christ existed and that he died on the cross at Calvary. They believe that they are not saved. They have not put their trust, their confidence in his all-sufficient redemptive work on the cross at Calvary. It's not enough to believe in the existence of God. It's true that that's essential, but it is not sufficient even the demons believe in the existence of God and they shudder. Why do they shudder? They shudder at the thought of their eventual punishment by him. The demons believe the fact, but they do not. They do not place their trust. The arrogance and pride and evil and the adulterated seed. When you study where the demons come from, I've done that on other videos, so you can look that up on the Nephilim and Rephaim. There is no way, just like in the end times, and I'm going to do another video here real briefly, just real briefly, uh, so stay tuned. But do you understand? So when people say you believing isn't enough, they're a profession of faith. Intellectual knowledge of a well-known fact 
It's proven. Agnostics and atheists believe that Jesus existed, but they have not placed their trust in the all-sufficient work of Christ at the cross of Calvary, believe on him for the remission of their sin once and for all. And many people sitting in churches, I'm going to tell you this because I love you and God loves you fiercely and passionately. If you have not believed on him and his all-sufficient work, faith plus nothing equals our salvation and eternal security. If you believe that it's faith plus, if you believe, and some people say, well, baptism isn't works. But if you believe that it's faith in him, plus you must be water baptized. I spoke just recently again with an apostolic preacher who said, unless you are water baptized and speak in tongues, you are not saved and you will go to hell. That is a lie. And that gospel that that pastor is preaching, he is accursed for that. And I pray for him. That he, and if you're apostolic, I pray for you. I, I love everyone. I want you to know the truth. If you have not placed and believed completely, confidently, placed all your trust in his redemptive work on the cross at Calvary, that's repentance unto salvation. That's metanoia. I'm not trusting in water baptism or speaking in tongues or doing good works or living better than I haven't. Please get away from that legalism, that licentious thinking. That is heresy. That is the doctrine of demons. So believing isn't enough. In that essence, meaning uh, not believing. I'm sorry, I said that wrong. I don't want you to get confused. I meant to say the mental, intellectual knowledge of the well-known fact. Believing, trusting in is enough. Faith plus nothing equals our salvation and eternal security. So, but just believing that God exists not enough. That's intellectual assent. There are many, I'm going to say it again, who believe that Jesus lived and he died on a cross. Brothers and sisters, that is not enough. The devil, the demons believe and they shudder. Now, why do they shudder? Because they know, they know what their end will be, but they have not believed on the redemptive work of Christ on the cross of Calvary to pay the debt for their sins. I hope I didn't confuse anybody. I hope you get it. But I wanted to bring you, um, because many are using that, truly, the ABCs. Admit you're a sinner in need of a Savior. Believe on the redemptive work of Christ at the cross at Calvary. His precious shed blood that paid the debt for your sin once and for all. It was all sufficient. He died, was buried, and on the third day rose from the dead. Call on the name of the Lord. Romans 10, 13. All who call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Well, brothers and sisters, he loves you fiercely and passionately. I love you too. Have an awesome day.